Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of Geller. And the more that I was researching and doing and analyzing, I think I could have easily made 10 videos. But because of that, I will try to watch as many games as possible, let's say within 25 to 30 minutes, so probably will be 4 to 5 games. And, you know, in a week that, well, we lost most likely the greatest chess player to have played chess, not becoming a world champion. And some might say greater than at least few of the world champions, Viktor Kochnoi, that passed away about a week, a week ago, you know, before this video is going to be on air. It's becoming more and more amazing seeing, you know, those old dudes playing chess when... Thinking about the top 10 in the world today, I don't know. I mean, who, who is above 40 in the top 10? Kramnik is old, right? He's 40, 41. And Anand, I still believe <clears throat> in the top 10 is 47, 8, something, something around it. And, well, really, Anand, amazing. But other than that, really, who is old? I mean, who is above 30? I mean, that's... Insane, you know, Carlsen, Giri, Caruana, okay, Nakamura is becoming one of the old ones, I mean, Aronian. So seeing those players, you know, like Coach Noy, Geller, Keres, and many others that were really at the top of the top of the world for many, many years is really, you know, they deserve all, all the respect that we can give them and probably should give them more than that. Okay. I'm going to show you a few games of Geller and, you know, plus score against Fischer, beating Karpov in an in amazing game, beating Spassky, you know, uh, playing in the veterans versus the women in the early 90s and pretty much, if I'm not mistaken, beating all the top women except Judith Polgar. I couldn't see a game that he has beaten her, but he's beaten all other top women. You have, uh, I, I think I put 23 games of him in, in the PGN, <clears throat> really quite a lot of games, and well, for a career that lasted at strong level, I don't know, 40 plus, 40, 50 years, that's minimum we can do. Okay, let's see his game against Fischer from the candidate Curaçao 1962. Okay, this game is important for, there is a very nice strategical nuance in this game. So let's go and see. First of all, Geller was maybe the biggest pioneer, if not one of the biggest pioneers of the Sicilian Knight of Schwenningen, you name it, with Bishop E2 variation, a, a line that was used many, many times by Anand in his world championship against Kasparov in 1995. Actually, Anand won game nine, and uh, then Kasparov changed to the Dragon, which was, well, very successful for him, but Bishop E2 was Anand's main weapon. Okay. Speaking about... Speaking, I just mentioned Anand. So, actually, Queen C7 was played here by young Fischer. And Bishop E6 seems to be the main main move with actually many games of Anand on the black side. Uh, games against uh, Pune Mayorov in Bacon Z, against Adams and... There are many other games. I just put two games here. Bishop e6, knight bd7 seems to be a bit more precise than queen c7, at least to my taste. Okay, so we got this story. All right. Yeah, usually when the pawn is on a5 and knight d5 is being played, black is taking and then playing a5 by himself. When the pawn on a5, well, white's idea is one, trying to mobilize his queen side pawns and it's really fascinating to see the huge, huge battle that happened in this position over the push for c5 and for the b6 square. Okay, knight c5. Most likely not a correct move in this position. f5 should be played 